Hello everyone. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending and introduce myself. I'm Mike McKenna. I have been at Ingenuity Systems in the control industry for just over 13 years. Uh, I've spent my career supporting projects in government facilities, hospitality industry, public and private school systems, industrial manufacturing, oil and gas. At Ingenuity, we try to provide our partners with the best products and education. Through that effort, we're excited to bring our partnership with Intesis and the opportunity to bring this product introduction webinar to you. I wanted to give some background about Ingenuity really quick and a brief update about what we are offer to our partners. Ingenuity was founded in 1994 to focus on the development and design of LawnWorks interface cards, I.O. devices, and drivers. We were the first company to provide an e-commerce platform for controls devices in the late 90s and early 2000s. We are the leading lawn works experts globally. Uh, we began noticing a shift in the market to include more open system protocols and a drastic increase in the industries that were applying uh, controls technology. Since then, Ingenuity has worked to stay on the forefront of the control industry's needs by adding Master Niagara AX and N4 certified engineers, technicians well-versed in IoT, industrial IoT, and open API cloud solutions, complete system design and programming services, and a top-rated UL 508A panel shop. We provide a wide range of manufacturers with over 60,000 <clears throat> products to bring you the best components for whatever your solution needs may be. Ingenuity has supplied products to over 80 countries, providing global access to the best solutions for companies of all sizes. From the one-man shop to Fortune 100 companies, Ingenuity is here just to help you provide the greatest value to your customer by providing you with the best service in the industry. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to use the raise your hand function or type it into the questions box and we can draw, try to address those if the time is right during the presentation or we'll for sure get to them at the end of the discussion. Now I'm pleased to turn it over to Eric Dunn at Antesis to start uh, the presentation. Thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, we, it's an honor to uh, be able to present our solutions for the integration of uh, HVAC systems into building, home, hotel, and uh, industrial automation systems and even cloud applications. Um, today, what I want to do is uh, kind of give that introduction. And uh, once again, we're pleased to be partnered with Ingenuity. Uh, the solutions we're going through today are all available through Ingenuity. So feel free to reach out to Mike after the webinar and uh, you know you can talk through what's available, pricing, availability, and, and that sort of thing. Okay. So today, um, our agenda is basically an introduction. Um, who is this company, Antesis? Maybe you never heard of us before. And then we're going to dig into um, the solutions uh, for AC units and even other types of units as well. As Mike said, um, use the raise your hand function or if you want, you can use a chat feature and submit those along the way. We're going to keep this kind of streamlined. Uh, there's about 36 slides. And if I spend a minute or two on each one of them, that's an hour. Um, hopefully we'll finish before then, but time permitting, uh, we'll address the questions at the end, or uh, as Mike is the moderator, uh, he's going to take a look at that and see uh, if we can answer the questions as we move along. Okay, so keep them keep the questions coming, and we'll address them as we see fit. All right. Now with presentations, uh, a lot of times I kind of wonder who is this uh, who's telling me all this information. Uh, Mike had a good introduction there as well, but just so you know who Eric Dunn is, uh, it's not all about me but uh, I am the director of sales from North America for Intesis Software. For me, I've worked at Johnson Controls, uh, Delta Controls, Field Server for a while, Train, and uh, Electronic Systems USA from the 90s. Maybe some of you guys know them way back there. The first ones that did system level integrations for Honeywell, CSI, Johnson Control Systems, that sort of thing. Now, now who is this company, Intesis? Uh, we're gonna take a, a quick look at the company. Uh, here, this is a, um, a lunch we had when I was in Spain last year when we started this venture in North America. A uh, good group of people, uh, I was a small company, good attitude, mixed group uh, with, a, with a 
uh, plan to take things to the next level. Now, with that in mind, Intesis is a small company, okay? But they were acquired in 2016 by the HMS Group. HMS is, means hardware meets software, and this company is all about integration solutions. But their applications are in manufacturing, transportation, medical automation, power and energy. They purchased Intesis to have a successful um, presence in building and home automation. And, and the company stands on its own and its own brand as well. Now, part of the conversation was uh, Intesis is very successful in Europe, Australia, and the Middle East. And HMS is a global concern in, on every continent, basically. And the conversation was, uh, how do we take Intesis to the global level like HMS is? And that's why I'm here. And at that time, they made a plan to hire um, area managers I, I tour in North America. I've got a counterpart touring South America, one for China, uh, one for Africa, one for Russia, and they're expanding all along the way and got somebody for Southeast Asia as well. So the company's on a, uh, a global um, expansion, and this is maybe why you haven't heard of this before, but the company's solutions are very successful overseas, and they'll be successful here as well. So just some background on Etesis, uh, found in 2000, a uh, young company, just 18 years old, uh, part of HMS, of course, headquartered uh, in Igualada, which is near Barcelona, Spain. Okay, sales in about uh, 75 different countries. Um, a lot of their sales are outside of Spain right now. Okay, three brands well recognized. Uh, we are ISO 9001, uh, EVO certified. Okay, designing, manufacturing, and selling best in class products. Okay, now technology wise. All our products and solutions are fully developed by us. Hardware, software, web services, uh, different hardware platforms uh, with 300 product references. And one of the interesting things with HMS is uh, they're paring down the hardware platforms uh, so it's a little easier to manufacture and keep stock. And the differences are in the software and the firmware uh, more than they ever have been. And we'll keep working on that to get a solid hardware platform that's easy to uh, reproduce on, on a quick term. So, active members of KNX and Ocean, BACnet, that sort of thing. Manufacturing is, is fully controlled by us. Uh, this is not something that's uh, farmed out to um, uh, manufacturers and assemblers um, in, in Asia or anywhere like that, okay? Uh, they have this right in-house. If it's not, it's externalized to uh, assemblers uh, near them, okay? Now, the interesting thing that I found when I joined the company was 100% of the products are tested in-house uh, with their own processes and stations, that sort of thing. There's no statistical or random sampling, that sort of thing. Now, what that result is, uh, since I've been here, there's been about, over the last 12 months, about three items that are actually warranty returns. And uh, all three items were situations where power was applied to the signal wires. So I don't think you can say that a lot of companies, our, our warranty rate is uh, above six sigma, okay, which is a, a defect rate of less than 0.01%. Okay, guys, really, really good stuff. Uh, everything is traceable and serialized as it goes out the door. All right, so that's the background on the company. Now, let's kind of switch gears and we're going to take a look at what the products and solutions look like. There's a complete range of gateways uh, that do open protocols, private protocols, Wi-Fi, you name it. Um, most all your major building automation technologies are um, supported. Okay. As I mentioned before, they're consolidating down to um, fewer hardware platforms. What we're looking at here is the, the V6, the version 6, which is uh, a hardware platform that uh, supports most all of our products at this point. Okay. Configuration software is external, uh, which is uh, a, a nice add because you can actually work on your laptop, on your workstation, build your program and load it on the unit at a later date. You don't have to connect to the unit and power it up in order to do your programming, okay? Now, most of your major protocols, um, MBUS, Wi-Fi, Dolly, Modbus, KNX, Lomwix, Backnet, ASCII, and a couple others, uh, you can bring those across the gateway and you mix and match. Uh, this unit here, open protocol to open protocol. So you're going back and forth. Uh, Modbus to Backnet is a real common one. And we supply Modbus to backend to system integrators, as well as equipment manufacturers that want to have a backnet option for their um, their devices. Maybe it's a chiller, maybe it's an air handler, 
maybe it's a zoning control system, that sort of thing. Okay, but you can mix and match across the gateway to find <clears throat> the solution that you're looking for. Right. What that might look like in application is you have Modbus devices in the field, convert that through the Ethernet port to Modbus TCP and or backnet IP. Or maybe it's a backnet MSTP solution. On the right hand side, you see some of the ports very well labeled uh, on the side of the unit. It tells you what each port um, does. Port A is Modbus, port B is backnet, so you don't have to guess about what's going on there. Okay. Another application here, uh, backnet MSTP in, and it KNX out. Uh, you, in the United States, in North America, you may not have heard much about KNX. It's, uh, it is the leading building automation protocol in Europe, South America, China, other areas, Korea. And it's uh, a, a little simpler than BACnet, but it's out there. And you might see uh, devices coming over from Europe because the KNX Association is um, doing all they can to bring uh, KNX into North America and compete with BACnet. And when that happens, uh, we're here to help you get KNX attached to BACnet or Modbus to BACnet or whatever you might need there. Okay. Now this is a nice little piece of hardware, but actually, how does it how does it work? Uh, there is a as I mentioned before, a uh, free, freeware program for downloading uh, the templates, the programs, that sort of thing into the unit itself. Uh, very easy to use, uh, easy to program. Uh, there's no, uh, no commas or no uh, dashes or anything like that you need to add in there. The system does that for you. Uh, if you're doing Modbus to BACnet, you put your Modbus registers in and it, it helps you convert those automatically uh, assigns BACnet instance numbers. It'll auto BACnet name it for you, that sort of thing. You do connect on the front of the box via a micro USB port, okay? You can also connect to the unit via Ethernet port. The micro USB is, uh, is an advantage, mainly because you don't have to worry about taking your laptop and putting it on the same subnet as the unit is if you're gonna connect by Ethernet and using a static IP address. If you don't do that every day, it's a little difficult to remember how to do it. But the USB gives you a direct connection into the unit where you can upload and download, save files, create project files, and that sort of thing. Okay. Now, in some cases, you might find that you, you know you're not really wanting to program anything. You maybe you don't like Modbus. Uh, one of the things we started out about six months ago is building Modbus templates. These are device profiles. Right now, we're from 91 templates. Uh, they cover generators, meters, electrical gear, boilers, all types of Modbus devices. And these are available in the freeware program we just looked at, MAPS. You download them direct from MAPS, um, the MAPS library, onto your, um, your gateway, and away you go. Now, I'll take a look at this real quick. This is a screenshot of the MAPS program. And we're into the section where you would download a Modbus template. See, there's ABB drives, air cool boilers, that sort of thing. We've got CAT gen sets, Kohler gen sets, um, Schneider meters, that sort of thing. So these are all freely downloadable. And when you bring them in, the neat thing is you can modify the template for your application. All the registers are there, and a few are active. We picked some that we think would be good to be active. You can also turn those off and add the others from the Modbus registers that are present. So a great time saver in terms of doing that. And our commitment to the marketplace is for Modbus devices like this, we'll create a new template uh, for a customer that needs one, uh, and we'll put it into our library so it's accessible uh, to the rest of the community. Now let's move on. Uh, those open protocol gateways, uh, open protocol to open protocol. One of the advantages with Intesis is the fact that we've got a great range of protocol drivers available for uh, AC units made by Asian manufacturers, uh, Japanese, Korean, Chinese manufacturers, uh, Daigen, Mitsubishi Electric, Samsung. The interesting thing is these are companies that we actually have relationships with at the factory. Uh, we work with them. Uh, they share their protocol specifications with us. We write drivers. We test it. They test it. It's approved. And then we can go to market. For instance, with Samsung, uh, Samsung just approved um, our new driver for their NASA protocol. 
and uh, tested out our new BACnet gateways. Okay, Hitachi, uh, which is may not appear on here, Hitachi just approved um, a new protocol driver and a BACnet gateway. So the factories know of us, they approve of us, and let us go to market. Now with some like Panasonic, Panasonic buys everything we've got and they send it through their channel. So those are distri their distributors actually market and teach us products. Fujitsu, same way, and many others. But some prefer for us to go to their dealers, their equipment reps, and we market directly to them. So we do market in different ways, and uh, we accomplish the, the same purpose. We get the solution to convert these private protocols to open protocols for integration into commercial building automation, industrial systems, hotels, and home automation systems. Now, what's this practically look like? Uh, before we looked at one big box called a V6 or a version six, uh, with the Antesis box, there's a slightly different um, version we use. And you'll notice there's different form factors here. And I'm gonna explain these and we'll go through them real quick here. On the right, right side, you see it says central. This is a central gateway. This is what uh, we're more accustomed to in the gateway business. One big gateway that does um, a system and converts it out to an open protocol. So in this case, um, KNX, a central KNX unit here, this will connect to the condensing bus of a VRF system and support 4, 8, 16, 34, 64, 128 indoor units converted to KNX. And the number of indoor units we support varies by manufacturer, uh, Panasonic, Dyke, and these guys are all a little different in terms of the way they, um, they are set up and they allow us to do the integration. Modbus, same way, and with BACnet, you've got central gateways you can choose from to do the integration, okay? Now, those gateways cost a little more than the ones we see on the left-hand side here, the with IR, ductless splits, and VRF. And the reason is, the ductless splits, VRF, and with IR columns, those are all gateways that are simple, pre-programmed, and easy to use. And these units are one-to-one. -one. So we'll get to this later on. I'll show you what it looks like. But these units, there's one little gateway for each indoor unit. And you might think in a big application, that would be um, very expensive. Well, it would be. That's why there's central gateways. In smaller applications, which most of your ductless split and VRF applications are less than 10 indoor units. So we can address a big part of the market with the one-to-one -one gateways that are simple, pre-programmed, and easy to use, okay? In the bottom, we see the Wi-Fi. And these units here, we'll take a look at in a minute, uh, they communicate uh, to the outside world, not through um, BACnet or Modbus, but a Wi-Fi connection, okay? So let's take a look and see what this, how this plays out. In Modbus, here you go, you've got a ductless split unit, a VRF unit, one indoor unit connected to this gateway, with Modbus RTU out, okay? The central gateway, many indoor units, we're connecting on a condensing bus line typically, or a central controller of theirs, and we're providing Modbus RTU out there. Applications, industrial automation systems, uh, SCADAs, DCSs, that sort of thing, right? And another application that came up is smart thermostats in hotels. Uh, Daikin, Panasonic, LG, Hitachi, they're all targeting the hotel market. And in the hotel market, you usually had PTACs, vertical stacks, through the wall units, whatever it might be. And in this application, Daikin's going in, LG's going in, the smart thermostat guys want to connect in a Western style thermostat operation on off. Well, you can't do it. And even if you, there are some converters, you use those converters, you're robbing the efficiency of the ductless split and VRF system because their efficiency is based on modulating and the inverter they use for the compressor. So with this, we actually emulate the remote controller of the HVAC company. And we can provide the link between the smart thermostat and the ductless split system. Okay. And you'll see here, BACnet, uh, the same type of technology. You have a central gateway, connect, you know, connecting bus line, or you can do one-to-one -one units, okay, for ductless split or VRF. And uh, I'll kind of explain this a little bit. I'm not sure what your all background is, 
ductal split is typically um, one outside conditioning unit with up to maybe three or four indoor units. Uh, VRF can have many, 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 many units inside, and you usually find the big condensers, they look like a big refrigerator. And they'll sit them on the roof, sit them outside the building, something like that. The ductless splits are typically more suitcase sized. Okay. With BACnet, this is probably no news to you guys. Uh, the BTL mark is probably one of the main things you look for in uh, any BACnet implementation. We are BTL certified, and we'll keep that up. That's our commitment to the marketplace because we know without the BTL mark, you really don't know what type of function codes are supported if we're uh, actually acting like the device that we're supposed to be. Okay. So that's out there for you, and we do provide backend MSTP and backend IP. You pick one or the other, not two at the same time, but it can provide that output for you. Okay. Now let's take a look. What, what does this actually look like in the system architecture? You're probably thinking this in your mind already. Very similar for Modbus and BACnet, but let's look at the lower left-hand side here. You've got Hitachi and, and Panasonic down there. One main central gateway, right? Many outside units, three outside units, many indoor units. Sometimes there's a communication adapter in between that they have us connect to. We connect to that, and then we provide back to IP or back to MSDP up to the system. Now, on the left-hand side there, you see the BTL mark, right? That BTL mark, one indoor unit connected to one small gateway. And this is so easily deployed. If you're doing back in MSTP, you don't have to connect to the unit. All you do is the dip switch settings um, up top, in the middle, on the bottom, and then you're good to go. Okay. On the right-hand side, Modbus, same thing. Uh, you've got multiple units uh, that can come into a central gateway. We provide that in Modbus RQ and Modbus TCP. One indoor unit, one small gateway, it comes up to Modbus RQ. Now, within TSYS, our commitment is to make it easy to use and easy to deploy. So even in the case where we have central gateways, the central gateways are not delivered um, blank slates. <clears throat> in this case, in these applications with the HVAC units, we actually provide a template so you can expand the, the unit uh, from 4, 8, 32, 64, 128 units so you can support those all along the way. We want to reduce the amount of time it takes you to deploy the units in the field. Okay. Yeah. One of the other applications that's been very successful is actually zoning control systems. And in this case, uh, this is a new one to me when I started, but the very successful out there, you find a lot of uh, zoning controls are just basically monitoring the temperature, there's a zone controller, and it changes the dampers so each room gets according to what it is required. Okay. Now, that was great when you had a standard um, air conditioning system, air handler, that had a Western style thermostat, right? Well, in this case, uh, if Daikin goes in, Fujitsu, Panasonic, any of these manufacturers go in, uh, we can make the leap from Modbus on the zoning controller straight into the unit. So you can control the unit with your same zoning controller that really wants to look at a Western style thermostat, okay, but has a Modbus output. Let's move on to something a little different. Uh, we've talked about uh, wired solutions. So we wire into the indoor unit or the central um, condensing bus line, and we provide a wire, either ethernet or a twisted pair out to uh, the system. In this case, uh, one of the reasons I joined in thesis uh, is the private protocols they got, and also the development of an IR database as well as Wi-Fi, okay? So what we're looking at here are, are three different units uh, with IR, Deco split and VRF. Let's start on the left-hand side. With IR, this unit uses uh, the infrared port at the bottom. There's a receiver and a transceiver there. Okay. It talks to the indoor unit and the handheld remote in the room, and we pick up everything there and translate that out to a Wi-Fi signal. Okay. In this case, the Wi-Fi signal for all three units here is a simple ASCII protocol. Okay. And that simple ASCII protocol can be integrated into any building automation or home automation system out there, okay? The ductless split in the VRF systems, the ductless split unit in the VRF, just different HVAC technologies there, okay? But we actually connect in to the uh, indoor unit's um, thermostat port, just like we did in the wired units. We're connected in, 
just like the uh, manufacturer wants us to, they prescribe to us and we emulate their thermostat, but we provide a Wi-Fi output at that point. So let's take a little deeper look at this. On the left-hand side, you see some examples. There are over 30 brands right now supported by our infrared remote control database. So this unit here has about 18 years worth of um, research into it. In fact, uh, about once every week or so, I get somebody that comes with me to a, with a new infrared remote controller. Hey, can you integrate all these units into your IR as well? We can look it up based on um, the unit's function codes. And if we determine we don't support it, my office in Spain needs about seven to 10 days. They can take that unit, program it into our database and make it available for that project. And actually, once in the database, it's available to everybody else after that, okay? This is a quick, easy way, it's a universal way to integrate multiple units, okay, into Wi-Fi. Now on the right-hand side, we're communicating Wi-Fi out to a local network. And you see here, AMX, Crestron, Control4, Elan, RTI, Vera, all these companies um, have drivers available. You can download and when you download the driver, it actually goes out and discovers our device and treats it like a thermostat. <coughs> one of the exciting things here recently is um, at the top up here, uh, one of our distributors who's a, a developer has written a driver to integrate this simple ASCII protocol from Wi-Fi into the Niagara framework. So now we have the ability to take 30 brands, of ductless split units communicating to them by IR, <coughs> excuse me, and integrating that directly into one of the most popular building automation controllers in the marketplace today. Now, for the wired units, uh, this is a good example uh, ductless split, the DKAC WMP. This is a Daikin unit, okay, for ductless splits. Uh, there's a connection cable we provide. And it connects in. We, we tell the customers, here's the thermostat connector, S21. And this is where we want you to connect, right here. On the left-hand side, we support direct connections to Mitsubishi, Toshiba, uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, LG, Fujitsu, Daikin, and, and more to come. Okay. And this Wi-Fi output uh, goes to the local IP solutions, all the home automation systems, but also to the, the tritium as well. BRF, this is the, the larger units, okay? On the left-hand side, they're supporting the same manufacturer because it's the same drivers, okay? On the right-hand side, output to the same systems and including tritium. The difference is in the middle, okay? With the, the DKAC, I'll go back here, you notice there's no remote controller in the middle. The indoor units only support uh, one thermostat connection. If we're used, then we take over that thermostat connection. There's no master-slave relationship here. It's one or the other, okay? In this case, the VRS systems, a little higher technology, you can, we can actually wire in parallel to the manufacturer's remote controller, okay? Doesn't have to be there, but if it is, we can wire in. This is the Daikin solution, but the others are similar to it. Now, we're going to change gears here a little bit. This local Wi-Fi solution is to home automation systems. What if there isn't a home automation system or a building automation system to connect to? Okay. There is one step further, and this is what we call a thesis home. And this gives the customer the ability to connect with a mobile application okay, through a cloud API. So we provide the mobile app. We provide the cloud connection. Okay. And this is, uh, this is kind of the way it looks here. You've got the mobile app communicating to the cloud. There's the unit in the middle, universal controller. There are also the wired units available, okay? Talking to the indoor units. Compatible in, in most, most any way. This, this is a slide that could have been used earlier. Uh, we can talk wall-mounted units, floor standing units, cassette, tower AC, maybe they're ducted, maybe they're in the ceiling, okay? As long as they're one of the brands we support and we have them in our IR database or we have the direct 
protocol driver link for them. Okay. Now this is interesting because it gave your customer a mobile uh, experience, but what if and you're not interested in, in a mobile app? What if you're an energy company and you'd like to install these in uh, facilities that need monitoring or load shedding? When it's a public API, you can do that. Okay. There's also IFTTT. If you're not familiar with that, that's a third-party cloud service. And that cloud service actually gives your customer the ability to use um, Antisys Home with other IoT devices. For instance, Nest thermostat is also IFTTT compatible. So Antisys Home and Nest can work together through the third-party cloud IFTTT. Okay. And the custom projects, we do OEM um, work for people too. But the application on the right-hand side, office building, residential shops, hospitality, public buildings. We attended a trade show not too long ago uh, called Cedia. It's a home automation show. And I was following up on the leads here just this week and I found one. There's a, a property owner and he's a, a real estate investor. He's got uh, 3,000 apartments in Los Angeles. And what he wants to do is uh, monitor and control the uh, Medea units that are in his apartments. And uh, we're gonna give him the ability to do that and especially since he has a mobile app, but also we can connect and give him a desktop view as well. Okay. So to wrap things up, uh, with Intesis, uh, what you have at hand here is the largest uh, market range of gateways for air conditioning integration um, in the world. Uh, there, there's nobody else that stands close to this. Uh, we have wire connections. They give you error codes. We've got the universal unit. Uh, the applications are, are nearly endless and can be expanded as required. This is a company that's uh, been at, the, at this for quite some time and it's tried and true and the manufacturers uh, have approved it. In addition to that, you've got a reliable cost-effective unit uh, that comes almost pre-programmed a lot of times from Modbus profiles that covers the most popular building automation protocols in the marketplace today. And to top it off, um, if the wire connections aren't what you're looking for, we can provide a Wi-Fi output that can be integrated into a local home automation system or any automation system by taking our simple ASCII driver or protocol and bringing it into your system. And on top of that, you've got uh, the ability to go cloud to cloud or give the customer a mobile app experience. So in Tesis, what you have is uh, integration uh, through innovation. The company is bent on integration, uh, but also in being an innovative company and seeing the new technologies coming forward. For instance, uh, next year, we'll be developing Modbus RQ back in the MSDP straight to the cloud. Okay, Developing wireless interfaces for our universal controllers. So in the, in the room, presence sensors, that sort of thing can be integrated into the unit. So I hope you found that helpful. I, we're a little bit ahead of time. Looks like we're at 33 minutes. Um, I'm going to wrap up here. And if you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Mike at Ingenuity uh, for price and availability, and we'll be happy to help. Okay, Mike, I think I'm at the end here. Um, any last comments or any questions raised that we can address? Yeah, we had a question about uh... A standard remote control. Can, can you still use a standard ro remote control with the with the IR receiver? Mm -hmm. Let me go back to that, and I'll show it real quick here. There's a nice slide. It depends on the unit. Okay, right here. Uh, I think this is probably the one they're talking about. This IR has a receiver and a transceiver. So in the room, it sits next to the indoor unit. It can be across the room, anywhere where the IR can bounce off and um, hit the indoor unit as well as our unit. Okay. But yes, this is one of the main differences. Um, there's a Honeywell version of this unit out there today. It's called D6. And uh, at the, on the face of it, looks like it's uh, the same thing. But when you read down, what you find out is Honeywell has a, a transceiver only <clears throat> in their infrared port. So they only talk to the indoor unit. And in their instructions, if you get down to the fourth page, it says 
take the remote controller, the infrared remote controller that comes with your indoor unit and put it away somewhere. Okay, you got, you got to lock it up because if you pick that remote controller up and command the indoor unit, their D6 will never know and the systems won't be synchronized. Since our unit has a receiver, you can continue to use the infrared remote controller. You can pick it up, command the indoor unit, but guess what? We're going to see that too. And we're going to take that and we're going to publish it to the home automation system or to the cloud and for the mobile app application. So, so yes, you can use both of them. Mm -hmm. and, and how is that unit powered, that, that infrared uh, unit there? It needs a uh, hundred or plus five volts DC. It comes with a uh, an adapter from 110 volt DC to plus five volts DC. It has like a little miniature connection on the back of it. Okay. Um, if you turn the unit over, there's a place that looks like a battery would go, but inside there, that's where the power connector is. Now, Antesis can't recommend this, but what happens in the field most often instead of plugging into 110 volt DC, they mount this unit next to the indoor unit and they run the wire over to the indoor unit and they find a terminal inside there that has plus five volts DC. Most professional installers will do that, okay? And uh, most of your owners and end users will just plug it into the outlet somewhere. And as long as it's in the room where the indoor unit is, It'll, it'll communicate with the remote controller and the indoor unit too. And then uh, there was a question about like ease of implementation for the ASCII protocol uh, mm -hmm. or, or how difficult is it to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a, I'll have to preface my statement because I'm not a programmer. Okay. But what is, I've been told is the simple ASCII protocol there's nothing, uh, it's not like BACnet and it's not even Modbus. It's a simple ASCII protocol. There's about 15 data points. That's it. Okay. And it takes about four hours to write a driver for it. The, the challenge, especially implementing this with AMX, Control 4, Crestron, Elan, all these companies like that, is actually getting it certified because it takes, you know, four to six months for these companies to work through it and certify it and test it out and everything like that. It takes about four hours to do it, but it takes six months to actually certify it. Um, with, with Tritium, I think um, my distributor, Alper, uh, had that written and they worked on off and on for about two weeks and had it done, so. Awesome, and then uh, there was a question about external power, but they didn't really highlight what what product that was for do all of the all of the products need to be powered externally or any of them battery operated yeah let's get to the last slide here where they're all shown i'll kind of walk through it and cover all of them quickly okay um in the upper left hand side here where we're looking at the all the indoor units okay for when we're wiring into those, we draw power from the indoor unit. And this is the probably the, the most outstanding thing. Working with the manufacturers, they share their power data with us as well. They tell us how much power is available in the thermostat port. That way we can engineer our product to actually um, limit their power to what's, what's available, okay? So when we're wiring into the indoor unit, we actually uh, draw power from the indoor unit and we communicate in the same wire, okay? Now, with the uh, universal unit we looked at, that actually has a, um, an adapter. It's 110 volt DC, uh, AC to five volt DC adapter, okay? And then the V6 unit, the open protocol gateway that goes back and forth, that's, uh, I think, nine to 30 volts DC, it's standard. Um, any 24 volt DC transformer will do that for you, okay? Any other questions, Mike? I think, I think that's all of them. Okay. Uh, you, you did a great job. And I just, again, wanted to thank everybody for attending. And we'll have this uh, webinar recorded and put on our YouTube channel, as well as embedded into our 
uh, resources page on, on the Ingenuity website, and we'll be sharing it on our social media pages. Uh, if you need any additional information from us, my email is really easy, mike at ingenuity.com. And uh, thanks again to Eric and the MTSYS team. Uh, that'll be it for today. Great. Goodbye, thanks, everyone. Mike. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye, guys.